Welcome! In this video, I will show you how to solve problem 3.4 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, the problem states the following. It asks you to use the Gram-Schmidt procedure to orthonormalize the three space bases that we have right here. And here we assume that this basis is not orthonormal. So what we need to do is use the Gram-Schmidt procedure, which is explained right here. So in case you are not familiar, the Gram-Schmidt procedure is, although it looks very ugly, it is in principle very simple. So the idea is that what we do is, first of all, keep in mind, our basis is not normalized. So we choose any vector from our basis. Doesn't matter which one. Let's say E1 and we normalize it, right? We, we want it to be orthonormal. So we just pick any of them and that's going to be our reference. So we pick that and we normalize it. That is step number one. Step number two, we go to any other vector. It doesn't matter which one. Of course, if you have them E1, E2, E3, you may as well go in order so that you don't get confused. Then we go right to E2. And what we do is that we take the vector and we subtract the projection of the vector, right, E2, in the direction of E1. So that's what we're doing here. We subtract the projection of E2 in the direction of E1, and we want to make sure, since this is a number, that this actually goes in the, in the direction of E1. That's what's going on. We say, how much of this vector is currently not orthogonal to E1, right? Because the amount that goes in the same direction, which is the result of the inner product, that is the amount that we need to get rid of. And we need to make sure that we get rid of it in the proper direction. So that is what's going on in this step. And once we do it, we get the vector. However, it is not necessarily normalized. So once we do this, we need to normalize it. And then we actually get a, our E2 prime vector. And then we repeat. We do this for every single one. But we have to keep in mind that we have to, for the third vector, for example, we subtract the projection of in the direction of the first vector and also the projection in the direction of the second vector. So that is very, very, very important. That's the Gram-Schmidt procedure in a nutshell. And as we can see, conceptually, it makes a lot of sense. If you want things to be orthogonal, it means there cannot be any projection of any vector in the direction of the others. So what do we do? We take the vectors, we normalize them, and when, then we subtract the projection into each direction. Okay, so with that explanation, I want to take a quick moment to just thank my Patreons on Patreon, right? Um, they are the reason why I can dedicate more time to making these videos. So if this is useful to you and you have the ability to contribute anything, any amount is really appreciated. It really helps me spend more time making these videos. Okay, so let's now actually begin. So as I said, let's go with the Gram-Schmidt procedure. Step number one, choose any vector. I will choose E1, we could choose any. So we choose E1. Now we want to normalize it. So now we want to find the norm. How do we find the norm? Well, let's use what we learned in the previous video and use the inner product, right? The norm of E1 squared is going to be the inner product of E1 with itself. Now, what is this? Well, let's take this, let's write it as a, just in vector notation. Uh, I think that's a bit more, um, I think it's a bit more intuitive. So one minus I comma, 1 comma i and then we multiply this by this would be keep in mind this has to be the complex conjugate so i missed a minus here so this is the complex conjugate of e1 right the bra is the complex conjugate of the ket um if it is the same quantity of course and then we do 1 plus i comma 1 comma i um so simply multiply each one so we get 1 minus i 1 plus i this will be 1 uh, minus i, uh, plus i, sorry, and then we get a minus i, and then we get a plus 1. So the i's cancel out, and we get 2. And then we have plus 1, and plus 1 from the minus i squared. So we have that the norm squared is 4, and thus the norm of e1 is going to be 2. Okay, so our new vector, so e1 prime, this is simply going to be e1 normalized. So we divide 
e1 by its norm. So that means simply one half times this thing. So one half times one plus i, i hat plus one half j hat plus i halves k hat. So that is our first result. Okay, so now let's go for e2. So e2 prime, or here we have to be a bit careful because we haven't normalized it yet. So whatever we get here is not going to be the end result. So for that reason, I will call this e2 prime prime, just so that e2 prime can be the end result. It may be a bit confusing, but it's just naming. Um, so don't worry if you don't like this notation, you can use any names you want. So what is this? We take the base vector and we subtract how much of this vector goes in the direction of the one we just found. So that would be how much of E2 goes in the direction of E1 prime. And then we want to make sure that this amount goes in that direction. So we multiply this by E1 prime. Okay, um, so we need to find these quantities. So how much is this? So let maybe let's calculate it down here. So e1 prime times e2. Okay, so this is the bra of e1 prime. So we need to take the complex conjugate of this. So this would be, I'm going to take the one half out again, um, just to make it easier. So one minus i comma one comma minus i. And we multiply this by e2, which is up here. So that would be i comma three comma one. You can use other notations if you like. This is just the way I like to do it. Um, okay, so this is one half, and then we have one minus i times i. So that's i plus one plus three minus i. So the i's, they cancel out. We get four divided by two, which is simply two. So this thing right there is two. So let's now plug this in. So e2, is this thing right here. So we get i, i hat plus three j hat plus one k hat minus two times e1 prime, but e1 prime already has a factor of one half, which doesn't look very good. I'm going to make it look a little bit better here. So it already, it already has a factor of one half, so it's going to cancel out. So we get one plus i in the i direction minus 1 j hat minus i k hat. So let's now calculate this. So we have e2 prime prime, this is going to be equal to, so we have i minus i here, so they cancel out in the i hat direction. So we have minus 1 in the i hat direction, then we have plus 2 in the j hat direction, and then we have plus one minus i in the k hat direction. But keep in mind, although this is now orthogonal to e1, it is not normalized. So let's normalize it. So now e1 prime, uh, sorry, e2 prime is going to be the end result. That's why I called the other one e2 prime prime because it was, you know, just a step in the way. So this is going to be e2 prime prime divided by sorry, this goes like that, divided by the norm of e2 prime, uh, prime prime, sorry. And what is that norm of e2 prime prime? Well, let's take a look at it. So let's write this up here. Um, so this is, or perhaps here, so minus one i hat plus two j hat plus one minus i k hat. And just as a quick side note, what is the, the norm here? So norm of e2 prime prime. So well, this would be just like we did before, right? The inner product of e2 with itself. So e2 prime prime inner product with e2 prime prime. So let's write this um, the way I like to do it. So minus one comma two comma, this would be one plus i, right? This is this part. So that's why we, we took the complex conjugate. And now we multiply this by minus one comma two comma one minus i. So let's multiply it through, we get one plus four, uh, and this is this thing squared, by the way, 
Um, so this is minus one, four, and then we have one. Then we have minus i plus i plus one. So the i's cancel out, we get that. All right, so in the end, this is seven. So seven is equal to the modulus squared, and thus square root of seven is going to be equal to the modulus itself. So here we have to divide by seven, uh, the square root of seven. All right, so that is e2 prime. So finally, we now need to calculate, I mean, I'm gonna put a line there to make sure that it's somewhere else. Now we need to calculate e2 three prime so e3 prime let's maybe call it prime prime as well because we're going to have to normalize it uh, in the end so this is going to be we take our vector e3 and we subtract how much of e3 goes in the direction of e1 prime and of course we make sure that it goes in that direction and then we subtract how much of e3 goes in the direction of E2, and we make sure that we are subtracting that amount from that direction, uh, E2 prime. And that's it. So now we just need to find each one of these quantities. So let's calculate, perhaps here on the side as well. So let's calculate E1 prime inner product. So inner product of E1 prime. You can see this is a very nice way of practicing calculating these inner products. So E1 prime and E3. So let's see, I'm going to write it down here, perhaps E1 prime is that thing. So one half, I'm factoring it out, one plus i comma one comma i. And since we are, however, in the bra form, this has to be the complex conjugate. So minus i minus i. And now we multiply by E3. And E3 is simply, well, 28J. So 0, 28, 0. So 0, 28, 0. So, well, this is simply 1 times 28 divided by 2, so simply 14. Okay. So this is E3, which is going to be 28 in the J direction, minus 14 times E1 prime. What is E1 prime again, that thing right there. So 14 times one half times one plus i in the i hat direction plus one in the j hat direction plus uh, i in the k hat direction. Okay, then we have minus e2 prime inner product, right, the inner product of E3 and E2 prime. So let's calculate that now. So the inner product of E2 prime bra, E3 ket. Well, we know that E3 only has a component in the J direction. So why don't we just save ourselves some time and only look at that? So E2 prime is two divided by the square root of seven. So we get 2 divided by the square root of 7 times 28. So this is 56 divided by the square root of 7. Now, I don't like to have square roots in the denominator. Well, you don't have to do it, but it's good practice to get rid of it. So we're going to just multiply and divide by the square root of 7. That way we get 56 times the square root of 7 divided by 7. And that is simply 8 times the square root of 7. So let's go back here, and that would be minus 8 square root of 7 times e2 prime. So that would be times, so we divide here, square root of 7. And this would be, let's see, minus 1 in the i hat direction, plus 2 in the j hat direction, plus 1 minus i in the k hat direction. So now we just need to calculate this. So 14 times 1 half, that's 7. These square root of 7, they cancel out. So in the i hat direction, what do we have? We have minus 7 minus 7i plus 8. So all that in the i hat direction, we use this and this. Then we have in the j hat direction, we have 28 minus 7 
minus 16, so that's j hat, then we have the k hat direction, and there we have minus 7, so minus 7i, and minus 8 plus 8i in the k hat direction. Okay, so now let's just add it all together, and this is going to be the result. Let's put a line there. E3 prime prime. So this would be 1 minus 7i in the i hat direction, plus 5 in the j hat direction, and then here we have uh, minus 8 plus i in the k hat direction. Now, the only issue here is that this is not normalized. So we need to find the norm of E3 prime prime. But we know that this thing is going to be the square root of the inner product of E3 prime prime with itself. So let's calculate it. So this would be, okay, so first goes the complex conjugate, so that's 1 plus 7i, comma 5, comma minus 8 minus i, and then we multiply this by the regular version, so 1 minus 7i, comma 5, comma minus 8 plus i. So let's just go ahead and multiply this. So this is square root of, so that's uh, 1, then we have minus 7i plus 7i, they, can, they cancel out as usual, right? This is basically uh, uh, the sum times the difference. And then we have this part squared, which would be plus 49. So those cancel out, we get 50. So that's 50. Then we have plus 25. And then we have this part, which is going to be plus, let's see, so we have 64. And then we're going to have the part that cancels out. So that's minus 8i plus 8i. And then we have this part squared, which is plus 1. So this cancels out and we get 65. Okay, so now let's see, that's 75, 80 plus 60, that's 140. So this is the square root of 140, which is 10 times, um, let's see, the, how can we separate this? Can we take something out? That's 10 times 14, which is 2 times 7. Hmm, none of those. Um, I guess we, if we write this, okay, if we write 10 as 2 times 5, then we can do it. Yeah, so that would be, yeah, we can, that's 4, so yeah. This thing is going to be 2 square root of 35. Okay, so that's the most we can simplify it. So that is the, the, the modulus here, the norm, so that means that E3 prime is going to be uh, E3 prime prime divided by E3 prime modulus, prime prime modulus. So that would be, let's take a look. So that would be this thing right there multiplied by, or divided, sorry, by this. So it would be one over two square root of 35 times that thing, which I guess I can just copy. So there we go. We found all three of our new vectors that form an orthonormal basis. And as you can see, this isn't all that bad. I mean, it, it is long, it is tedious, but it isn't really hard if you think about it. All we did was choose any vector, we normalized it, then we went to the next vector, took the original form, subtracted the projection in the direction of the projection. We had to do, you know, a little bit of algebra here, algebra there. We divided by its norm, next. And then the same thing, we took the vector, subtracted one projection, subtracted the second projection. If there was another vector, we would have to subtract three projections. So it becomes tedious, but it's not really hard. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.